Hey, Carly, can we bring the meeting to order, please? Um, welcome to today's budget setting meeting of the Liverpool City Region Combined Authority. As always, uh, if we can ensure that phones are switched to silent, and when any of the presenters are doing so, can you get as close to the mics as possible so the people in the public gallery can hear what our deliberations today are about? Um, can I start this meeting with the sad news of the passing of Councillor Ron Abbey's wife, um, Sandra, who had been ill for some considerable time? Councillor Abbey has been around the political scene for some time and has spent an extortionate amount of time, perhaps now um, on reflection, doing stuff for us, doing stuff for um, the people that he serves and for the Transport Committee and for the Combined Authority. And I've asked for the indulgence of the, the leaders who have agreed that we should uh, mark a sign of respect by a minute silence. So if everybody could join in showing that respect to Councillor Abbey Point. Um, hopefully people will bear with me, my voice will last the meeting. Um, I was persuaded to sleep out um, rough last night in uh, Lime Street with a number of other uh, people for a charity called um, Railway Children. and. Actually, when somebody said there's a charity about railway children, I thought that Sally Thompson had um, fell on hard times, so immediately agreed to go and support the charity. But actually, what it is, it's um, it's about those people, young people, vulnerable young people, who run away, and find themselves all too often in stations, um, and need assistance and support. And the charity um, provides a, a wraparound service for young kids, um, often escape and abuse. And last night in Liverpool, in Lime Street, in Birmingham, in Manchester and a few other places, people slept out and raised money for charity. And thanks to a lot of people in here and their generous donations, um, I was able to raise 2,200 and um, that total is increasing. If you have a look on the, the Virgin Money just giving page, it's still increasing now. In Liverpool, we got about six thousand pounds, and cumulatively, including I think a, a big one in, in London, uh, it's about sixty thousand pounds. I'm expecting to get in from from um, people's generosity, really. But it's not just about that. It's not just about the money. These things are really important because they raise the profile of what it is that we're trying to do. And it leads us nicely on, doesn't it, to what we're trying to do in our city region. Our local authorities um, have some of the best practice in the country. And last night, when I was walking around, believe me, there's still people who were forced to sleep rough on our streets. And we're the sixth richest democracy in the world, and yet people still do that. So um, the more that we can do to raise the profile of this, and obviously work with our team internally who have a housing first approach uh, that we're developing a strategy for that will really start to address the, 
the fundamental issues that far too many people in society are faced with. So um, again, thanks very much. Those of you who haven't, I've got the names of those who did. And by admission, that means I know who hasn't so far. So um, if you'd like to go onto the, the page and we'll provide you with the details, um, it's still not too late for you to donate to a very worthy cause. If we could turn to the main agenda then, and if I ask Trudy for apologies that we've received so far. Received apologies from Mayor Anderson, Asif Hamid, Jane Kennedy, Councillor Simon, Councillor O'Neill, Councillor Moran, Councillor Powell, <coughs> Councillor Robertson Collins, Councillor Spurrell, Reverend Cannon, Dr. Loudon, Gideon Benthoven, and Barbara Spicer. Are there any further apologies? No? Okay. Um, item two is a declaration of interest and um, I've been asked previously by a member of the public what this actually means. This is an opportunity for um, those people who take part in this who have the right to vote to declare any interest in any of the items that are on today's agenda. And as far as I know, nobody to date, uh, today has um, submitted any declar declarations of interest. Um, so item three, are the minutes of the previous meeting of the combined authority held on the 11th of January 2019, and they're included in pages one to 12. Um, can I ask if there are any questions relating to those minutes? Okay, if there are no uh, items related to those minutes, can I ask for them to be agreed, please? Um, Item four, and I'm hoping that my voice will hold up on this, is the budget setting report for 2019-20. And so I'm pleased to confirm that the budget has already been considered by the Overview and Scrutiny Committee uh, at a pre-scrutiny meeting on Wednesday. Um, that is the first time that we as a combined authority have been able to do this. and. Um, I think there was a general acceptance that the committee thought that this was the right thing to do to give um, some time to pre-scrutiny, but it was also considered by the Transport Committee on Thursday, and sadly, for a range of personal and weather-related reasons, our overview and scrutiny committee was in court, and um, you might remember what the weather was like a, a couple of days ago. Uh, it's unfortunate really because when we are audited these sort of things count against us but that was through nobody's um, deliberate not non-attendance it was because of, of weather um, problems at the time but we're hoping certainly that the next overview and scrutiny will be called members of the meeting um, have had circulated two copies of the reflections and resolutions from both of these committees and I ask that you carefully review these papers as part of our considerations today uh, of the proposed budget. Members of the public have also had shared with them copies of reflections and resolutions from both of these committees. There were some very positive news this week. Uh, yesterday, the publication of Transport for the North's £70 billion pounds blueprint for the future of the North's transport infrastructure, which included our priority plan to ensure that the Liverpool City region is connected into Northern Powerhouse Rail and also HS2 through a brand new twin track rail line between Liverpool and Manchester. Now assuming that the strategic transport plan is adopted by the TFN board uh, next week, which as you know, I'm the representative from the Liverpool City region. Um, we just need the government to put its money where its mouth is at this stage and give firm financial commitments to it. Um, people will have seen from the information that we have um, provided to them at previous meetings that we're talking about £15 billion pounds worth, worth of economic growth to the Liverpool City region alone. 24,000 jobs and thousands of additional visitors to the Liverpool City region. So it's 
of huge strategic importance to us. We felt that we should never have been left off the original proposals, but now at the stage when this strategic outline business case has been submitted, we are included, and that's because of the hard work, it has to be said, of leaders, both current and past in the city region, and chief executives, both current and past in the city region, all pulling together with businesses, with our trade unions, with the media, it has to be said, we've been very supportive on this, and a whole host of other stakeholders, and we've got to the stage now where I think it was almost impossible for anybody to consider proposals where we would not be included. So, um, really good news for us. I'm delighted to announce that this week also, following a, an appropriate procurement exercise, we've identified our preferred technical consultants to work with us to develop the next phase of the business case for our tidal project. Again, hugely transformational to the whole of the Hill City region, a project that will potentially last 120 years and will uh, have the ability not just to create clean, green, renewable, predictable energy way into the future, but also for us to develop technology here and hopefully a partnership with um, Camel Eds to look at the modularization of it so that we can export it to other countries through Liverpool um, 2, which is obviously the only post Panamax facility, the only deep water facility that we currently have. So great opportunities for us really to, to exploit that for, uh, to ensure that we um, sustain the jobs and the apprenticeships over at Camel Eds. You'll also be pleased to know that the preferred company and their key partners are organisations with their global presence and reputation and that the work will be developed and delivered from their offices within the Liverpool City region. Um, whilst that's about as far as I can do to tease out who it might be, there will be further announcements in the near future. And there are lots of good news stories on the cultural front this week as St Helens and Liverpool we were both chosen to host matches as part of the Rugby League World Cup in 2021. And yesterday we had the equally brilliant news that as part of their year as Liverpool City Region Borough of Culture, Wirral will be this year's host to two top-level cycling events with the Tour of Britain visiting the Wirral for the first time. And then later on in the year, Hamilton Square provided the circuit for an OVO film an OVO Energy Tour event in May. Um, great work by the council there and uh, all the officers who brought this one home. And in addition to all this, the uh, what's called now the MS Bank Arena, it used to be old Echo Arena, that will be the venue for the Women's Netball World Cup, and that's going to take place in July this year. All of these events really give us an opportunity, don't we, to showcase locally what we do and what we can do with elite sports and sporting events and to show off the great city region that we have and places like Hamilton Square as a backdrop to a cycle race I think will be transformational for people to understand just what goes on in the world. We'll get world um, global TV coverage on this and uh, obviously we want to capitalise as much as we possibly can to increase our business numbers. Now, <clears throat> people, if you cast their minds back, will remember that I've always said that devolution was a journey, not a destination in itself. And if you look how far we've come as a city region since 2015, when Phil Davis in November of that year signed our devolution agreement, you'll see that the progress has been significant. In fact, it's marked progress. Um, the very fact that we do now have six local authority areas, six local authority leaders who work so closely together to ensure that we can maximize the benefits to the 1.6 million people that we represent. The devolution agreement we signed in November 2015 gave us 900 million pounds of funding over 30 years. And make no mistake, the bravery of those leaders to sign that at that time is manifest when you consider that without a metro mayor and a devolution agreement, we'd um, probably be short 
I think there's a shortfall in our budget of about one billion pounds to where we currently are. And that's because of that devolution agreement. There's lots of people who are looking enviously at what's happening in the Liverpool City region, including governments um, and the additional powers that we have, but not just that, the way that we're spending our money differently than other areas. And let's face it, across Merseyside and Holton, we've been the hardest hit by austerity. Um, the report just the other day by the Centre for Cities gave some vindication to our claims that have um, perpetuated over the last nine years that we were being hollowed out by a Conservative government that didn't understand the needs of the people in our area. And that third party verification or um, independent proof of what we've been saying is really important as we go back down to Whitehall and Westminster to fight our corner for further devolution so that we can take a greater stake in what happens in our city region and really start to shape our own destiny. And um, the devolution deal that we've got is paying dividends. It's helped us to start to turn that tide of austerity, but also to bring in so much needed investment back into the city region. So since I was elected um, 20 odd months ago, um, we've worked hard with the leaders in our six districts to secure £183 million in additional funding, and that's over and above the money that we get each year through the devolution agreements. That's new money coming in. We've already begun to make a real difference um, to the people in our area by, for instance, creating 9,000 jobs and 5,500 apprenticeships. We've introduced half price travel for our apprentices. We're investing £6 million to support our high streets, and that's for local authorities to decide in one, what is in the best interest of their own areas and come up with blueprints and master plans for them. We've helped 800 families through our household into work programme, and EMA has led on this. Um, it's not just a programme that's working well for people in the Liverpool city region. It's uh, been looked at across the whole country now as an exemplar of how you can um, use funding and the wraparound support that that can provide instead of a sanctions first approach that many other um, areas and certainly DWP uh, use. And we've um, bought the new trains which we'll see at the end of this year coming into commission uh, for 2020 we had 460 million pounds uh, not only fantastic for people who have got disabilities but they are owned by us the public we're the first to actually do that in the country and they were our trains um, 460 million pounds worth of work and work for platforms and signal and, and all, all the associated stuff that goes with it alongside that of course We've not been slow in opening new stations and uh, improvements to our infrastructure. And we will be delivering even more benefits in the future. Now, however, and there's always a however, isn't it? Uh, because central government provides no long-term dedicated funding to cover the costs of the Metro Mayor and the combined authority, we've been left with no option but to introduce a precept this year we staved off that eventuality last year at the last minute with the help of the leaders, but it wasn't a long-term sustainable solution. So um, we got SIPFA, um, who are recognised being the experts in the field, to do an independent report to look at the long-term sustainable uh, alternatives to a precept, and I'll report on what they uh, said in a second. But, even if they hadn't, we as seven leaders of the Liverpool City region wish that there had been an alternative. We were told that there was potentially an alternative when we signed the devolution agreement in the first place because I genuinely understand the, the cold wind of austerity that's really biting in many of our working class areas. And whilst we've tried to keep the precept to a, a figure that's as low as we can possibly get it to, even though it's 32 pence or 13 pound a year, to people who've got nothing, that's still an added burden. And we genuinely would prefer
prefer not to do this at all. But we've worked uh, hard um, to look at what we can do to reduce the costs to keep that as low as we possibly can by sharing services with Mersey Travel where we can and squeezing every penny of value for money that it's possible to do. And it means that 95% of the uh, households in the Liverpool City region will pay on £13 a year. And I'll be absolutely honest, this hasn't been an easy decision for myself or any of the leaders to have taken. But it's something that we have to do if we want to continue seeing the benefits of devolution that are teased out at the very beginning and deliver a long-term vision for our area. In addition to the funding we've already received, if we deliver on our devolution commitments, we could receive further funding which we estimate to be in excess of a billion pounds. So this budget both reflects my priorities and those of the combined authority leaders and makes provision to advance them over the next 12 months, including the funding for a one pound fast tag for city region residents, the infrastructure to provide ultra fast broadband speeds for every part of the city region, proposals to start to look at re-regulation and taking greater control of our bus network without predetermination, the delivery of 50 million pounds, 52 million pounds worth of adult education budget, a new generation of Mersey ferries to reduce to replace the old ones now which are um, costing an awful lot to maintain. We will have a new smart ticketing system to replace the Wardles card. There's going to be a Myrtle transport plan which will look at easing congestion, improving air quality and increasing connectivity. There will be the introduction of a city region apprenticeship portal, that's where all of the information that is possible to get on one site will be there so any apprentice can click on or anybody interested in starting an apprentice can click onto this and get um, all of the information readily to hand and there's the development of the Liverpool City Region Spatial Framework. Delivering on these projects will not only bring huge benefits to the City Region but should also mean that we're able to secure that additional funding that I mentioned earlier and if I can assure you all that we will use this budget to continue to create genuinely inclusive growth that's at the very heart of everything that we're doing community wealth building social impact social value um, all built in and hardwired into the policy making of this authority and we'll ensure that that money then is invested to build a fairer stronger and more prosperous city region for everyone with no butter left behind with that said um, the detail of the budget will be, um, I'm not for John, oh it's there. <coughs> John, you're going to go through um, the, the budget for us um, and the report uh, that members already have. Uh, yes, thank you, Chair. Um, as you see, uh, and I, I won't dwell on this, um, but the, the first part of the budget does refer to the mineral costs and the combined authority element of the budget. This is essentially the budget for the new responsibilities associated with the devolution deal. As, as you've just mentioned, Chair, that the budget over the last couple of years has done its utmost to shield the local taxpayer for any additional costs that have arisen from the establishment of the combined authority going back to 2014. And in the budget for next year, the, the Mayor has again um, tried wherever possible to reduce and contain costs. However, the reality is that the, uh, that the responsibilities and resources associated with the Mayor combined authority have grown significantly, even in the relatively short period of time since the election um, of, of the first Metro Mayor in 2017. So as you've just mentioned, Chair, that there is an ambitious programme of work and some highly cha challenging ambitions for the, uh, for the combined authority and some extremely significant resources that we've attracted and that have been devolved from government um, for those purposes. These additional resources that could be well over a billion pounds um, in the coming years require significant skills, expertise and capacity to deliver 
For example, it was yesterday that it was announced that our adult education budget has been devolved towards uh, the allocation of that. It's, it's over £50 million a year. Um, so clearly that takes some, um, some resources to manage. So whilst 2018-19 was a transitional year for the Mural Combined Authority, uh, the Mayor's first budget was very much based on building capacity and attracting talent uh, and skills to the Combined Authority, and that was reflected in the um, budget for last year and the revised budget that was agreed in September. Um, this year is very much the year of delivery, and, and this budget has to reflect that. So we've put in place the capacity needed to support this diverse portfolio of responsibilities and continue to use the financial levers that are available to us to minimise the cost of the local taxpayer. Next year's budget, the budget for 2019-20, uses external funding wherever possible, particularly linked to specific activities such as households into work and the um, work doing with homelessness. It's also leaning very heavily on shared service model, as, as, uh, as you just heard, uh, particularly with MERS and travel structures and support structures, uh, support costs to try and keep these costs to an absolute minimum. Even after taking this into consideration, however, there does remain a gap in financing and, and the MER and the combined authority have got obviously a legal duty to set a balanced budget, which, which is unavoidable. So we've worked this year, as we heard with SIPFA, to try and identify a sustainable solution to this. And as just been mentioned, um, the constraints we've got on how we can use government funding that, that we receive, coupled with the financial position that the local authorities have been placed in, does leave us with the precept as the only sustainable option. So this budget does include a precept, as you've heard of, between £12 and £14 pound, uh, for most households. £19 pound per band D in council tax jargon, but that translates into a much smaller payment for, for most households. The second element of the budget, and the largest element, or the larger element um, financially, is the transport budget. And this was scrutinised and agreed by the Transport Committee yesterday at its meeting, so I don't propose to go into this in, 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 in a great deal of detail, save that the key features of this are uh, an extension to the freeze in the transport levy. We will maintain the existing arrangements for transport delivery and funding in Halton. Uh, there's been a significant changes in the structure of the Mersey tunnel tolls, but we've tried to do this within a financial package that um, keeps tunnel tolls revenue broadly the same this year, next year as this year. And as, again, you've heard about the rolling stock project, that's going to move into the final stages of construction and delivery in the next financial year. So there is uh, a drawdown of the um, funding for, for rolling stock in, within this budget. It's fair to say that, and the report mentions it, there are risks going forward with transport funding, particularly around losses of government grant for the Mersey Rail Network. And this budget seeks to provide some space for the CA through Mersey Travel to work with Mersey Rail, DFT, and other partners to resolve this as, as we move forward. So in conclusion, the budget as presented is a balanced budget. Um, it does try to move the combined authority from the capacity building transitional year that, that we're in now very much into that year of delivery. Uh, and the budget hopefully reflects that. Um, and that said, I'm, I'm, I'm happy to answer any questions and, um, as our colleagues here from the finance team. Thanks, John. Any questions for John? Um, okay. Can we therefore agree the recommendations as follows? And we'll take um, these individually at first. The report be noted A. I agree. We agree that the mayoral budget is presented at table two of the report. We agree. C is agreed to funding costs associated with the exercise of the mayoral responsibilities as defined by the combined authorities' finance order 2017, the establishment of a mayoral precept in 2019-20, distributed between households on the basis set out in table one of this report. And now, if we take recommendations D through to M, if we can group them together, should members be minded to, is that agreed? Can we therefore take those recommendations D to M, are they agreed? Thanks very much. Um, item five is the Transforming Cities Fund, and this report seeks approval to commit circa half a million pounds from the Transforming Cities Fund to enable two schemes to progress to the next stage of design and development. 
and Councillor Robinson will take us through that report. Yeah, of course. As we've um, had reports previously to uh, Combined Authority about the Transforming Cities Fund, which uh, is a devolved pot of money uh, to be spent on the transport network. Uh, the vast majority of it is capital money, but there is a small pot of revenue-based money that's available for the development of schemes, and that's what this report deals with, the actual kind of uh, revenue funding uh, for development of some of the schemes that we wish to fund uh, from the TCF uh, pot. I think one of the things that's very important to point out is one of the uh, restrictions around how we spend transforming cities funding is the fact that it all has to be delivered within the four year time period of the uh, funding being awarded to us, uh, which obviously limits what we can deliver because certain large infrastructure and large schemes take longer than a four year time period to develop and then deliver in their entirety. I think that's a really uh, important point to make. The uh, candidate schemes that we're bringing forward and recommending that should receive the development funding. Uh, one is uh, the Liverpool City Regional Green Bus Corridors project, and we're recommending a couple of hundred grand uh, of development funding for that for a number of key corridors across the city region. And we've identified with our district colleagues and with the bus companies a number of those key routes that carry the largest number of passengers in and out of the city and in other key locations across the region. Um, and a very detailed process, uh, we will start uh, looking at what the kind of interventions literally on the ground might be or come from that. Added to that, uh, we're also recommending that the Liverpool City Region Cycling and Walking Network project, which we think is uh, particularly opportune with the, the excellent announcement uh, that we've had about how we will be hosting the Tour of Britain uh, later on in this year and we're recommending a quarter of a million pounds of development funding go towards the physical design of that network and some of that network is uh, uh, something that we've identified under a previous report to the combined authority really sort of spreading out across the region touching all parts of the region with a high quality uh, cycling and walking infrastructure that can get more people traveling sustainably so we're recommending uh, that uh, unfortunately, whilst we've had a very, very good bid uh, for what we're calling the Liverpool City Region Mass Transit uh, project, which is a very, very exciting scheme, both within the city but also within the Wirral, um, because of the fact that to design and then crucially implement that scheme is going to take longer than a four-year period. Uh, that's why we're suggesting that uh, it's best not to use this part to develop and deliver that scheme, although that scheme is a very strong proposition in its own right. And equally, uh, there is a hydrogen, hydrogen fueling option study uh, that we've identified <coughs> that we will fund that through and other means from a mayoral pot. So I hope that gives a, a suitable encapsulation of what we propose. Thanks, Ian. Any questions, Phil? Yeah. Um, <coughs> can I uh, say I welcome this funding and, and echo Liam's uh, particularly welcome the uh, extra money going into uh, cycling, particularly in the, in the great announcement of that tour of Britain um, that we, we heard about um, in the last 24 hours. I, I was just going to ask Liam, um, could, could you just give us a bit more sort of information around what kind of um, projects might come under the Green Bus Routes Corridor um, sort of heading? I'm quite interested in, in, in just hearing some. You know, what ideas we're talking about there. Yeah, absolutely. Well, obviously we've identified about six of the key corridors that are the main bus routes in and around the, the region. And one of the key focuses is genuinely how we can speed up those services and so how can we give uh, the bus a prioritisation over a private car. We're really keen to look at doing that in the most sort of uh, innovative ways. So a lot of um, technological solutions can be a key part of that particularly things like smart traffic light technology. So effectively the traffic light can tell when the bus is coming and the lights can go green so the bus can come through. Um, potentially other kind of highway improvements, things like what we call bus gates. So a bus can basically get round the traffic lights uh, that other cars are uh, sat at. Or potentially other innovations like red routes. So we can actually speed up the flow of buses but other traffic as well. 
equally can we have a significantly improved um, approach to bus stop infrastructure to actually make them more of a kind of uh, shop window, dare I say, it, that people want to use in the same way they would use a um, train station. <coughs> equally, can we make sure we install high quality real time information screens, uh, which we've got at some locations, but could we spread them out wider across the key bus network so passengers can understand not just when the timetable says the bus is going to turn up, but actually how it's operating and give people the confidence to, to use it. Obviously, over the next few months, if the funding is uh, awarded as recommended, we will really get into the kind of detailed and nitty gritty work very, very closely with all of our district colleagues to make sure that what we bring forward genuinely, as the fund uh, uh, indicates we have to, is transformational and can attract a lot more people onto buses. That's all on. Um, thank you, uh, Mr. Mayor. Uh, I just want to co uh, congratulate Mr. Robinson on this, on, on this report and colleagues behind it as well. Um, this is why we're here, isn't it? This is what uh, we raise the money for to change people's lives. Um, in terms of St. Helens Street to be parochial, Town Centre Gateway, uh, but that's, that's going to make a heck of a difference to a lot of people tied in with that Lee Green Sustainable Transport Hub and also the hydrogen fuel funding ultimately. This is, this is transformational stuff and I, I, I think it's fantastic. And that's why we need the resources in order to make sure we can prepare the schemes and then deliver the schemes. And so uh, congratulations, thank you very much. Absolutely. Um, with that said then, can we agree the recommendations as set out on page 63, please? Um, item six is a bit of housekeeping. Uh, the report recommends that councillor Kate Brocut to be appointed as Deputy Portfolio Holder for Inclusive Growth, Economic Development, Digital and Innovation. Is that agreed? Agreed. Um, item 7 is a public question time and we've not received any public questions for this budget meeting. Item 8 is petitions and statements and we have not received any petitions or statements for this budget meeting. Item 9 is the minutes of the Transport Committee held on the 10th of January 2019. Are they agreed, please? With that, then the next meeting of the Combined Authority will take place on Friday the 8th of March 2019 at 1 o'clock. And I declare this meeting closed and thank you for your attendance.